Welcome to the Workology Podcast, a podcast for the disruptive workplace leader. Join host Jessica Miller Merrill, founder of Workology.com, as she sits down and gets to the bottom of trends, tools, and case studies for the business leader, HR, and recruiting professional who is tired of the status quo. Now here's Jessica with this episode of Workology. Welcome to the Workology podcast sponsored by Workology. Today's podcast is part of a new series on the podcast. It is the CHRO series, and we're talking about the roles and responsibilities of the Chief Human Resources Officer. The CHRO is an executive or C-level role that deals with managing human resources as well as organizational development and implementing policies of change to improve the overall efficiency of the company. This series is powered by Hub International. Today I'm joined by Jenna Sapanero. She's the Chief of Staff at Postali LLC. Jenna is responsible for HR functions for her company, including talent and recruitment, onboarding, performance management, and training. Jenna, welcome to the Workology podcast. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to have you here. And one of the things I want to call out is that your title is a little bit different. Your official title is Chief of Staff, but your responsibilities make it a CHRO role. Can you talk a little bit about your responsibilities and the company size? Sure. So we're a team of 17. um, So we're pretty small and our leadership team is made up of myself and the president and the CEO. And so I am responsible for all the hiring and onboarding, performance management, organization initiatives and improvements, team benefits and perks. Um, But I also, a big part of my job is, is company communication and documentation and making sure that we're all on the same page and sort of rowing together um, to get towards our, our long-term goals and, and bring everyone along for the ride. Well, thank you for that. I, I just wanted to, to call this out because I think that a lot of people think that, oh, a CHRO, their only job title is a CHRO. But for smaller organizations and different company structures, you are doing a lot of different kinds of things. So let's talk a little bit about that and how your role as the CHRO works within that smaller company. You mentioned you are on the executive team, but uh, talk us through your job and sure. um, maybe more about what you guys, what what you're working on. Yeah, so um, the way that our, you know, when you bring that up, I think about our org chart and the way that it works is our president oversees finance and our CEO oversees operations. And I kind of sit between the middle of them and I support initiatives that both of them are working on in those different areas. But then I, as a department of one, oversee the HR department as well as our internal marketing departments. So um, that's related to uh, some background that I have coming into Postali um, and a a role I've I've picked up this year. But I am, you know, constantly wearing multiple hats every single day, depending on what is needed. And my my primary role, the thing that I'm making sure that um, I'm taking care of every day is our team, um, their needs from a benefits perspective and our talent needs. So if we're hiring and I'm always looking for the best people to add to our team. That's my number one um, goal each day. And then I'm um, helping organize our internal marketing efforts. And then whatever um, Jim needs from an operations perspective, supporting him there on organizational changes and improvements. And then John on um, some of the larger initiatives and um, kind of acting as a liaison to between our accounts um, consultant that we use and our benefits administrators. So kind of jump in between a lot of, a lot of different things on a daily basis. Never a dull moment. No. (laughs) And you mentioned Columbus. So I'm assuming Columbus, Ohio, correct? And then tell us about Postali. What, what does Postali do? Who do you serve? Yeah, we are a digital marketing agency for attorneys. So we build websites and provide SEO services and all sorts of digital marketing services for law firms throughout the country. So Um, We're overseeing and managing about 60 um, legal websites right now, and um, we design them and develop them with SEO best practices in mind. We execute PPC campaigns and manage social and develop the content and strategy behind law firm websites. And we've been in that space for 11 years. What a, just an interesting niche, you know, Uh, you don't, you don't, everybody needs 
digital marketing, especially now with all of us working remotely and most business happening online, but even law firms and attorneys, just like other niche industries. Yes. Yeah, we definitely, um, you know, both Jim and John have spent, um, you know, near a decade, decade or more um, sort of understanding this industry like no other. And I've worked at other agencies and, you know, there's a lot to be said about being able to dive so deep into one specific industry and get to really know the ins and outs. One of the things I think makes us so unique is um, our ability to understand the entire business operations of a law firm and, and how that, how we can use that knowledge to support their marketing efforts and really um, serve as a business partner to our clients because of the depth of knowledge that we have about the law firm industry. I love that. And a, a valuable tool as, as somebody who is in the HR space, but runs a, a digital training and online business. So very yeah. cool. Talk to us about the skills and experience that you feel like are absolute requirements for the CHRO role. There are so much, so many things that I uh, could list here. And I think the first thing that comes to mind is emotional intelligence. Um, my background in the public sector, I worked for the state legislature here in, in Ohio, in Columbus, and I have a humanities-based major as a women's studies and comparative religion major. And I think to be successful in this role, you need to be really astute in observing others and how they're doing, um, how they're feeling, how they're responding to things, especially to change um, and, and being able to respond accordingly and tailor your and you know my communication style to different ind individuals as well as two different groups to be able to get me make sure you're getting your message across properly and thinking through what will matter to that person about what you're sharing um, and being being able to show um, some empathy with that. I mean, I'm a very but you know, I'm a, a classic HR person is I'm a people person. And I strongly believe that if you can reach people on a personal level at some um, in some way, then you're going to have a much easier time um, delivering them tough feedback if you need to, getting them to come along um, if a change is being made. Um, so that's that's probably one of the, the greatest skills, um, I think. And then I think you do need a proven ability to lead people, not just projects. I think that there's a big difference between being able to organize work really well and get you know, kind of get all of those, the different components and timelines and things into place and um, truly lead people and be able to show others that you are interested in their development and, and kind of bring them along for the ride with you. Do you feel like this pandemic with everybody now working from home has, has changed your style and, and how you're approaching and, and communicating with people? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I'd like to think, and I, I feel that at Postale, we've always done a good job of really considering every member of our team as, as people, not just employees at Postale. We, we care about what else is going on in their lives. We consider that. Um, and, you know, we, we show that in a lot of ways interpersonally and through our benefits. But I think that we've all had to, you know, especially as anyone who's a manager on our team and just the team in general, consider wh where someone might be with their mental health or someone, you know, if someone what someone might be going through given the circumstances, given maybe their, you know, the lack of access to their loved ones, their family members, and the toll that that is taking on them, you know, and it's been kind of a taking it a day, week, month at a time, um, because there's been like different phases of this, you know, we're in November of 2020. So, you know, I think the kind of uncertainty of March was really stressful in April. And now the kind of the wear of how many months we've, our, everyone's lives have been changed and sort of not ever imagining that it would go on this long. That's, I can, I can tell that's starting to wear on people. So um, I think really keeping that in mind and, and checking up on people more. I think I've definitely been trying to personally check up on our team members more. Um, luckily we have a lot of great communication tools in, in place. So I can kind of tailor that to people's style. So I, you know, for some, I might send a quick Slack and, and say what's up and, and just kind of see how they're doing. Others, we might schedule a virtual coffee hangout and just kind of chat for half an hour about whatever and talk about what we've been cooking and our dogs and things. Um, but I've definitely been making more of an effort on that front. I love that. And in this interview, 
series that we've been doing with the CHROs, you're the first officially, and I'm doing air quotes when I say this, Department of One. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you talk to us about how that is different maybe than, than other CHRO roles? Sure. Yeah. And I think it's important that while I am technically a Department of One, I certainly have support. And I think probably the biggest distinction to make is we have an accounting team and a benefits team that are outside of our organization. So while I serve as a liaison to them and I'm involved in, um, you know, rolling out our new health plans to the team and making sure everyone understands what they need to sign up for and all, the, all that stuff, I'm not bogged down with the administrative paperwork. So I'm not processing payroll. I'm not processing um, a lot of the paperwork. And that was a, you know, it's a conscious choice by us as a leadership team to, to realize that, you know, in order for me to be able to focus on bigger picture items, then we needed someone else to do that work. So I think that's important there. And then um, both um, Jim and John are, are very hands-on with, with all the work that I do. So um, while I'm usually the main one sort of executing the decision, I definitely have um, them to, to think through everything and to plan and to kind of vision out what we want. So like all department of ones that are, are having to process, process payroll right now are super jealous of the fact that yeah. you have an outsourced <laughs> team to help you with that. I, I have a, a friend of mine who uh, was in, has been in manufacturing and she changed her wedding date thinking about payroll processing day. Like she needs to be there for that. And, um, oh, no. I, I know, but that's, I, I, I'm telling you everyone, there are people listening on here that are saying, yep, that's how my life is. So I, I love that your organization values your role as an executive partner in this and is willing uh, to invest in those other services or other people so that you can really focus on the strategy and the execution. Yeah. Yeah. And we're a big believer in um, getting creative with resourcing when we need it. We're not going to, if there, if we don't have the right person to do something in the time frame that we want, we, we try to get really creative with the solutions to try to, to try to get it done. Let's take a reset. This is Jessica Miller Merrill, and you are listening to the Workology podcast sponsored by Workology. This interview and this podcast episode is part of our CHRO series, which is powered by Hub International. And today I'm talking with Jenna Sapinero of Postali LLC. This episode is sponsored by Hub International, your full service employee benefits broker. Explore Hub's 2021 employee benefits outlook at www.hubinternational.com for emerging trends challenges and opportunities ahead in 2021. Now, when we had our prep call, one of the things I really loved that you shared is you talked about technology adoption and you mm -hmm. talked about lattice in, yes. in terms of how you're, you're using that. And it's been critical to, uh, to the, your success in your role. Can you walk us through how you're using lattice and then, um, kind of the, how it's changed or um, helped you support the organization? Sure. Yeah. So I think before I go to Lattice, I want to go to Radical Candor by Kim Scott. So I don't know if you've um, read that book before, but it is all about caring personally while challenging directly. Um, and it's really a book about communication. And we read this book as an organization and we talked about it. And it was kind of the first time that this type of thing had been done at Postali. And we just really stressed the importance of consistent, direct, and kind communication and kind of like wanted to put it out there for the team. Like, this is what we want. We want you to be honest. We want you to be highly communicative. That's that's going to be the the way things are moving forward here. And, you know, after sort of like laying the groundwork through that book, Lattice came into play a few months later um, as really the platform to allow that to happen and to make sure that it was happening. So it wasn't just a suggestion, but really something that was ingrained into our work and, and how we communicate with each other about things besides the literal tasks at hand each day. We have a, a great project management tool that we, we use um, that and two great project managers that handle the day-to-day -day work. But um, Lattice is, is really for how we are um, supporting our teams in their professional development within the company, within their own career goals. 
Um, it's how we are keeping track of company-wide goals and initiatives and making sure each individual is supporting those. And it's how we are giving consistent feedback, both public praise and um, private criticism, room for improvement. So the rollout of that, you know, I think probably everyone in HR talks about the importance of communication. And, um, you know, we of course started with why, and I think obviously doing the sort of team book reading as a, as a group and discussion really helped everyone understand why it was so important for us to invest in this type of platform and ask that everyone participate in it. Um, and then, you know, we, we customize Lattice for our purposes. We are a small team and not every feature made sense for us. And I think that's a big thing that I've learned in general is a lot of large uh, sophisticated software tools are meant for larger teams. So we do, I think, a good job of adapting them to um, make sense for us and what our day-to-day -day looks like. And so, you know, each time we've rolled out a new feature within Lattice, um, you know, we sit down with the managers first and we get their buy-in and we answer their questions and concerns uh, before we roll it out to the rest of the team so that we can ensure that when the, as we know, conversations always happen outside of those meetings and the side conversations, and that's okay. But um, we want to make sure that we're really um, being clear about why we're doing things and um, getting our, our managers set up to support their direct reports through Lattice and, and through some of those requirements that we have. First off, I love Radical Candor. It's one of my my favorite books. And as my team has grown, that is one of the, the books that I, I pulled off the shelf and said, I need this for myself as, as a leader that's going to support my team members. So I love that that you guys have, have added that and it's helped shape these different initiatives and programs that you guys have rolled out since. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're big fans. I've actually, uh, I got to see Kim Scott speak at a, a Reich conference, which was really cool. Um, but it's just, it's timeless advice. <laughs> we always, we keep going back to, we even did, um, when we first read the book, we kind of did the plot point we had everyone sort of uh, anonymously place where they thought they fell on the chart, um, which was which was good to kind of have sort of a transparent moment of like, okay, here's where we're at as a team and where do we want to be? I love that. I, I, I the last time I uh, listened, well, I, I read the book was audio book. And so mm -hmm. uh, it, it kind of, it, it's her reading it. So I feel like she's my best friend now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so I get, get all the insights directly from her voice. So that's fantastic. Yeah. I want to ask a little bit more just about technology in general. So sure. we, you mentioned Lattice, but obviously you use other HR technologies. You mentioned Slack earlier too. Uh, how does technology support and help you focus on company goals and ensuring that all employees are engaged and in alignment? What does that look like? It's so important when we have, we have sort of like a symphony of sub systems working together um, to uh, make sure that the team knows where to find the right information and that we're keeping track of things in the right way. And it's a lot of stuff. Um, you know, we have Slack as our chat tool. We have Rike as our project management tool. And then we have a tool called Notion, which is a shared workspace and note-taking app that you can really highly customize um, and create your, you know, very unique custom workspace for your team, um, which we've been using now for two years. And it's a great, great place for us to um, hold company information. It's a great place to um, house our values and our vision for the company and information about our team members. And um, it's, it's visually really appealing. You can, you can really customize it and add photos and emojis and all sorts of cool stuff. So it's been a great place, not just for um, our existing team members, but new team members when we bring them on. Um, for them to be able to browse through and, and read about the company and where we're at and, and where we're looking to go. And that's a great, a very foundational, I'd say, HR tool for us too, because people know um, when we roll out initiatives or if we have a new process doc um, or a process, you know, new process in place, that Notion is the place to go for that. One of the other things I wanted to make sure that we touched on is your guys' benefits package, because it is freaking amazing. Yes, it is. Especially considering the size of your organization. Can you talk us through some of the highlights and how they're impacting your employee engagement and retention and so on? Yeah, yeah. So we are a values-based organization and one of our values is people are the reason. 
And we really do care about having genuine connections amongst our team members. And like I said um, earlier, we you know, really do want to support each team member um, outside of work. We don't really believe in like the, you know, you come to work as one person, then you leave and go home to your home life or your personal life. I mean, we want people to feel like they can bring their whole selves to work every day. And having really fantastic supportive benefit programs from, you know, a full medical dental and vision plan, a profit sharing 401k plan from a really fantastic paid family leave program for new moms and dads at 100% pay for 10 weeks, whether you give birth or adopt, um, to our flexible time off. We don't have a, a cap on, on vacation time, on, on taking time off. These are all things that have been, since I started with the company two and a half years ago, very, very clear from uh, John, the founder and president, and Jim, the CEO, that we, we care deeply about these things. And um, it's, I've heard from current team members and as I'm, you know, talking with candidates when I'm hiring, it's, it's a huge draw to them. I think more than ever um, when companies recognize that these, all of these things, in addition to your salary, of course, impact your life greatly. Um, and, you know, they, they range from the very serious. It's very important to have medical insurance, of course, but we also have a Starbucks perk when we're, when we're in the office and we've got a Starbucks across the street. We want people to be encouraged to walk across and get a coffee with their coworker. Um, and so we give, uh, you know, a gift card to Starbucks each month. So, you know, and we're always, I didn't even name them all. <laughs> They're on our website, but um, we're always dreaming up new things too and, and surveying the team, you know, what, what would impact you? What would um, mean a lot to you if we were able to offer this? And uh, that it's just, it's just very important to us. I'm just really incredibly impressed with Postali, the leadership team's focus on the people and investment in your role. And that's coming through in the performance and the growth in the organization. It is, it is. And, you know, we, we talk to our team members all the time and we, you know, for a small agency, we have people who have been here for three, four, five years, you know, beyond and our benefits um, and support in, um, you know, in our flexibility, especially with their schedules and, you know, attending to their needs to support their family and adjust their schedules if they need is definitely something that we hear time and time again that people really love about working here. Jenna, thank you so much for, for sharing with us today. A lot of really great nuggets here about roles and responsibilities and, and how HR can make an impact in an organization of any size. I wanted to ask you where people can go to connect with you and learn more about you and the work that you're doing at Postali. Sure. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I really appreciate you sort of including me in this group. Um, I love talking about what I do and our team. And I, I love that we do have prioritized this role for a company our size. And um, I think it's really important. So um, you can uh, go to postali.com. You can reach me at jsapanero at postali.com um, as well as on LinkedIn. Awesome. And, and we'll include your LinkedIn uh, profile URL in the show notes as well. So and post all these information too. So you can check out all the amazing benefits, job opportunities that they have available, and then also connect with Jenna too. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us, Jenna. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much. There have been so many changes in HR in the past decade, but we've never lost our focus on the people. HR teams are now being formed around an executive level role like the CHRO or Chief People Officer or, in Jenna's case, the Chief of Staff, who are more connected to the strategy and operations of the overall business. This means that this leadership position has a large role in technology selection, adoption, training, and so on. I appreciate Jenna for taking the time to share her experience with us today. Thank you for joining the Workology podcast sponsored by Workology. This podcast is part of our CHRO series and is powered by our friends at Hub International. This podcast, the Workology podcast, is for the disruptive workplace leader who's tired of the status quo. This is Jessica Miller Merrill. And until next time, visit workology.com to listen to all our podcast episodes. Are you studying for your HRCI or SHRM exams? Join our free HR certification study group on Facebook. 
search for HR Certification Study Group or go to hrcertificationstudygroup.com. Ace your HR exams with the HR Certification Study Group. Certification Study Group. Certification Study Group. Certification Study Group. Certification Study Group.